All right, everybody. I want to talk about the DLC for Elden Ring. I want to kind of give it a quick review here and give it my two cents as to how I felt about the game. Now, before we begin, I want to talk about the few complaints that uh, I found legitimate about the game that I heard people talk about. That was one of them being the performance issue. I do believe this game experienced a lot of performance issues. Um, but a lot of it for me was resolved when I turned off the online mode. I, uh, I stopped uh, kind of slingshotting everywhere and I stopped lagging as much as uh, I felt like it felt like lag, I guess. And I, it stopped crashing for me. Now, if this works for you, great. If it doesn't, I am so sorry. But uh, the performance issue is the biggest complaint that I, the biggest legitimate complaint that I would possibly agree with. The second complaint I see people um, basically rating the DLC pretty low on Steam for is the fact that the bosses are hard. I do not believe this is a legitimate complaint and I do not believe it is deserved. The game is known for having difficult bosses. The whole time people talked about how they wanted harder bosses. Um, I mean, many streamers were talking about how, you know, how they would have liked the bosses to be a little harder as compared to uh, the first game. And you know what? We got the harder bosses and now people are mad about it. The thing is, this game is known for having a difficult boss fight. And you can actually make the boss fights, fights pretty easy depending on your build. This DLC will make you rethink your build. It'll make you want to figure out the best way to actually fight a boss before i was able to just take this great sword and do whatever i wanted my the build i already ran through the game with is this great sword build um i'm already on a second run right now using a a magic run because magic is fun it is fun in the game um so my second run is with magic this is the character i beat the game with uh my first character i beat so, no, I don't think it was a legitimate complaint to rate the game poorly because how difficult the bosses were. The bosses are beatable. You just got to find out how you can beat them. It'll be different for everyone. For example, uh, for me, I was able to get through nearly every single boss until the final boss. Uh, I needed to change up my, my build a little. So let me just show you really quick what I had to do. Uh, I'm kind of go over it. So this is what I have right now. Uh, I did not have this throughout most of my playthrough. I just had the Golden Beetle for extra XP. So throughout the entire game, this was my build. Except for the turtle. I had something else instead of the turtle. Um, It was something silly. Uh, oh yeah, it was this. Uh, because at the beginning, I did not have as much endurance as I have now. So this was my build when I first started. Uh... This, because it comes with a beard, and any suit of armor that comes with a beard is an S tier for me. So I don't care that it's actually pretty heavy. Uh, it gives me really good defense, but that's 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 negligible. <laughs> that can be ignored. Why? Because it has a beard. Therefore, it is the best armor, uh, best helmet you can have. Then I also have the bull go gauntlets and grooves as well, just because they give me the the best armor as well. Even though the 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 legs have a nice nice set of little clown feet right there um now this is the only one i actually have that does something the raptors fe uh, black feathers it gives it it strength it strengthens my jump attacks and that's also why i have the claw talisman that's also why i have the lion's claw uh, ash of war all this combined to give together gives me a crazy jump attack with a lot of damage and that's basically how I got through the entire game. Um, it made it really hard when I had to fight some bosses because, well, um, as you can tell, it's a slow attack and it leaves me open for a while before I can roll. So I had to change up the build when I got to the final boss. Now, if you guys are having a hard time throughout any part of this game and you need to change up your build, um, I would recommend swapping over to a shield build and either going strength or arcane and this is why now if you already have a strength build this is what you can do all right if you're having a hard time just a quick little guide as i'm giving this review here um if you're having a hard time and you need to switch up your build you want to fight a boss get the fingerprint stone shield and then also get the serpent's spear the reason you want to get the serpent uh spear and not the other ones 
is because the serpent has a high strength scaling uh scaling set or the spirit serpent hunter is what it's called and then we'll get the shield and the reason you want to get these two is because nearly every boss in this game can be deflected they do physical damage nearly every boss in this game does an insane amount of physical damage which can be 100 percent negated with this shield so the other reason you'd want endurance is it has some decent stamina so you can keep that shield guard up and then you also want to take these uh these charms with you which you can get from the base content it's gonna be the great shield talisman and that's about it <laughs> this one you you're actually gonna get from the new content but you can get it pretty early on it is the uh two-headed turtle talisman it gives you uh, faster stamina recovery so <clears throat> with this build and you can also take the great jars arsenal so in case you don't have the endurance needed to hold all this heavy equipment this will give you so much damage reduction and damage negation with the shield you'll base you're basically ignoring most boss damage and then you would want a spear weapon so if you're a strength build you're gonna go ahead and take the spear and just jab him in the face because if you do the light attack while you're guarding you kind of combo the attack so you still stay guarding and you're still able to attack so you're negating all the damage while stabbing them now is this gameplay the funnest no but if you're having a hard time and you just want to get past that boss, pull this baby out and melt that boss like a mother ducker. Like a mother ducker. Quack, quack. All right. Let's go ahead and head over here to... Uh, in case you don't have a strength build, you have Arcane. You decide to have more Arcane because you like that blood loss build. You're going to take Mogwin's Sacred Spear. You got to max this baby out and then you're going to start stabbing people and causing them to bleed. Stab, stab. Now, let's say you decided to go a dex build. You do not get this spear until you beat Mesmer. Sadly. But you do get these spears before you even get to the DLC content. Or you can grab this one from the DLC. But you have an option to actually get the Vyx War Spear if you want to use that. Or uh, what other dex build? This is the, a dex fate. This one is also an arcane, uh, an arcane spear. So, uh, this one right here would be a dexterity faith spear. Either way, uh, what you're going to want to do is look for a spear that best suits your build and then gets enough strength to wield this shield. And then you can just jab at the bosses. Uh, nearly every boss here does damage negation. So that's just a quick little guide. I'm just going to cover that. And then we'll go back here to the review of the game. Uh, I'm just bringing this up so people can understand that there is a way to make the game easy for you. This combined with summons will give you an easy day and allow you to get through the content. And then once you're done with the boss, you can go back to whatever build you want until you get to the next boss. Try it out with, you know, your strength build or your dexterity build, what you normally take, just so you can have fun with it. And then once you're finally getting, like, tilted and you don't want to deal with the boss anymore, pull out that shield and that spear, beat the boss, and then go next. Uh, going over that uh, kind of lets you know how many times I had to deal with these bosses before I realized I had to change the build. I had to go through them a lot. I died so many times. But to tell you the truth, other than Mesmer, every boss I died to, I had a fun time. It was it was great learning their mechanics and uh, eventually getting through it. Now, let's talk about the world. How much content is in this game? So, this game has so much content. It honestly could be a game on its own there's so much content in here it took me roughly 40 hours to get through most of it now i know i'm still missing some of it i killed nearly most of the bosses there's supposed to be like 70 something bosses and i've killed roughly 60 of them um i know i'm missing a few but i killed the the main story ones of course because I, I was able to beat the game and then i i killed some of the major ones like uh what was his name uh mag magmir migmar uh, I can't remember his full name, but I also killed the Mother of Fingers and a few other big time bosses that were actually. Uh, the amount of bosses in this game, it feels like it could have been a standalone game. Um, many of the creatures here are extremely aggressive and they almost don't give you a, a chance to heal. Uh, it's not just the bosses, but it's also the mobs. Uh, the world itself, these three areas are similar. 
each with their own quest lines if you want to do the the side quest lines or um just kind of wander around these three areas uh this one here this one here and this one they're just kind of like fields fields of grass uh this church is pretty cool now we got some more areas like over here uh well first let me show you around so this is kind of how those three areas uh, tend to look you know with these wheat fields and grave uh grave sites and kind of torn structures and then we got this side uh this this area over here it kind it kind of feels like a um i want to go yeah go here it feels like a swamp sort of the area is flooded with water and it's pretty cool the mobs are are pretty varied here they're all a little they're, they're all slightly different depending on where you're at um it it's just a flooded area it's got a very cool scene about it it's got these blue roses that make or blue blue flowers that make it look so insane it makes it look so good uh, let's see if we can get to the bottom portion here so i can show you how that looks now there's a bunch of cool areas here as well like over here is a giant hole that eventually lets you go into a kind of hidden zone <coughs> it's like a hidden zone that's not on the map So let's just walk around and let's go on a walk here and let's looks pretty nice you got some deer more grave sites uh it's kind of like a blue pollen that's just kind of floating about also and the weather also kind of changed so this is how this area kind of looks it's a it's a bit of a beach side i believe there's also a beach here somewhere i think it's on this side so that's how this area looks and it's pretty unique oh hey what the hell let me deal with him and he knocked me off my horse all right enough of that so the next area i would like to show you is over here this is like a mountainous area with a bunch of dragons um <laughs> there's a cool fight scene between two dragons here which i found of me uh it was really fun to watch and uh if you feel like it you can probably take you can take part um i just let the bot the two dragons kind of beat the shit out of each other either way this is kind of how this area looks uh you're slowly climbing from this point here all the way to the top of the peak to deal with some asshole dragon So that's kind of how it looked uh, like at the top and how it looks like down here. It's a very mountainous terrain and it was really cool to experience because the whole way up, the winds get stronger, the weather changes. Um, it's insane. It's actually, you can see thunder right now. It's so cool. This area was probably the most interesting area that I found. Um, it was very unique. It, it, it was fun. It was fun just to travel through. All right, the next area I want to show you is here. This place was kind of annoying because you could not use your goat. You cannot use your goat horse. So you're just kind of walking the entire, like, all over the place. Uh, this is, like, another swamp area, but it's more of the uh, the madness swamp, right? The, um, the madness god situation. All the creatures here are affected by the madness and they got yeah look he, he's got them glowing orange eyes he's pissed he's an angry goat uh that goat's so pissed he's attacking a wall yeah like these guys all be going crazy um this is a very creepy eerie vibe that i got while i was here these trees kind of look like they're haunted they're they're just withering away the whole aesthetic in this area is kind of like that it's got an orange hue to the entire thing uh, let me take you to one of these islands here because there's two of them there's this one uh that's dildo island one and then there's dildo island two uh i don't really have any um graces uh grace points over here teleport to so we'll go to dildo island one i'll kind of show you how that looks So over here, there's the there's a special situation you gotta do. You kind of gotta blow into one of the dildos. All the dildos kind of point in the direction where you gotta go. Uh, once you blow into it, uh, you're gonna blow into two of them, and it activates the side quest. 
Uh, there's one here, like I was talking about, and it looks pretty cool because, um, well, well, you you know what this this is just kind of creepy on its own. You kind of notice that the floor here, if you look at it, it's as if there's grooves. Now I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but there's a place, uh, in real life that uh, it's it's got these moving rocks, is what they're called. Uh, it's like a it's in a desert area, and there, it looks like the rocks are moving because there's grooves on this uh this desert sand and there are rocks at the end of the grooves and it looks like they move overnight and that's because the winds push them here it kind of has that same feeling because you can see that these grooves all end with a like a finger at the end of it like this they're their fingers but you know build those whatever and it kind of makes it look like the fingers are moving when you're not watching or at least it feels that way it's really cool so this is Dildo Island 1. Now over here, <coughs> you can get to this island once you get through Shadow Keep. This is essentially like Mesmer's castle with all his troops. And as you get through Shadow Keep, there's going to be a section where you go through a series of elevators and you eventually get pooped out at the end over here. I do recommend getting over here because there is a holy item. Let me show you. I had that holy item because I just finished killing the the final boss. It's called the Golden Braid. It reduces holy damage. <coughs> if you're really having issues with the end boss, take this holy braid. It'll reduce some of the holy damage that end boss does to you. Um, so that's basically how that area looks. I showed you the madness area, the mountain, the kind of flooded area. These three areas are the same. They're just kind of the, the grassy fields. Uh, let me see. I want to give you a, the best view of the castle. Uh, and honestly, that'll probably be not the main. Because um, this area over here is like a flooded portion of the castle that dips into this area, which is like a cathedral or uh, ruins, right? Uh, <clears throat> over here, you get to jump between the roofs and kind of make your way through the Shadow Keep Castle. There are two entrances that you can take. Um, this way gets you doing some platforming stuff. So if you're interested in like Mario platforming, you may actually enjoy going through here because you're going to be jumping through the rooftop, taking out enemies, trying to avoid being blown off the rooftops and into the water. Over here, you're just going to be doing a lot of fighting because there's like a little camp here that kind of blocks your way. You can just kind of make your way through. There's also a furnace column that you can fight if you want to fight them. And then you're going to make your way through the front gates of the sh of um, Shadow Keep, where you then fight a, a couple bosses, uh, some hard encounters, some like mini bosses, like say, and eventually until you get to Mesmer and get tilted while fighting Mesmer. Let's go ahead and let's pop the plate. I want to show you how this plate gate plot. Now there is one area of this castle that I want to show you that I thought was amazing. It's kind of like a, a library. So this is the castle here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. This is the good one. So this is the building you're going to be kind of crawling through, trying to make your way towards uh, Mez. It was pretty sick. The whole aesthetic to it was nice. It kind of felt like a war, like a castle preparing for war. It was really cool. Look at all these. It was sick. Uh, now, what I want to show you here is the first floor. No, no. First floor. Because eventually you make your way to this section of the castle, and it's a library. Now, the whole castle has, like, different areas to it. There's, like, a, a, a garden in the center of it that you can travel through. There's the side of the castle, <laughs> which you kind of use these uh, rafters to kind of make your way alongside it. And then there's this massive library here uh, full of these stone tablets. It is pretty sick. And then I'm not too sure what that's supposed to be, but if anything, it is gnarly as hell. Look at that guy who's just dangling. He's just hanging around. He's just getting his uh, he's getting his workout in. Uh, he's he's getting swole. Oh shit! All right. Uh, eventually, you meet Mesmer, and then this is another area here, which I uh, actually uh, they're just uh, a type of ruin. Go ahead and get here. I'm going to show you the ruins, and then I'm going to head over to uh, two more areas that I just want to kind of show you 
that way you know how these parts of the game kind of look looks so good so you're kind of traveling through here and it's just ruins and you're kind of climbing through them going up and down escal uh, elevators and stuff like that <clears throat> Sorry, man. All right. Yeah. So that's how this area looks. It's really nice. It's just like a ruined, uh, kind of forest jungle-ish area. Uh, let's see here. This is actually the castle that I, that I wanted to show you. This is where you fight possibly your second boss. You're going to have to fight him to get through here anyways. Eventually you'll fight this boss. And this looks so gnarly with the bodies hanging on spears. So you're getting through this encampment first. And then behind this encampment is essentially like this mini castle in which you got to work your way through to get to the other side. It is so sick. And this is, this is probably going to be the first castle you actually encounter. The main game. <laughs> I remember that yeah that area was really cool when i saw it I was... all right uh so here yeah so this is possibly the first castle you're gonna be working your way through um uh, this is where you're gonna fight the divine beast as you get through this area you're gonna hit a second part where it's blocked off by these like black uh roots in which you gotta go work your way all the way around because the first thing you're gonna do is go here you're gonna find these Roots that are blocking the doorway. So you got to work all the way around this way. All the way. And get to here. And you unlock the thing that will remove those roots. And then you can either use a, an elevator in the backside to get back in here. Or you can make your way back to the front. And just kind of work your way through the castle. Now there's a lot of stuff in here that's really cool. And you'll eventually fight the final boss around this area. I can't remember which. Either way, there is so much content to this game. Me just going over a quick summary uh, <laughs> took almost 15 minutes. Just kind of trying to do a quick summary of the areas. So my final review of the game. If I uh, 1 through 10, I would give it either a 9 or a 10 out of 10. Uh, this game had so much content for $40. This DLC, I mean. Th that's the problem. I'm calling it a game. This DLC felt like a game on its own. It could have been a game. The $40 was worth it. It took me 40, maybe 60 hours to kind of go through the areas. And I don't think that was quick. I took my time. I died to the bosses a lot. It was fun. Um, I, I don't think I was speed running it. Uh, I also wasn't taking my time though. I wanted to beat the bosses. So I would say I did a, a kind of mid serious casual run and it still took me 40, 40, 40, 50 hours to complete the whole thing. Um, and $1 per hour feels like it's worth it. And I'm about to do a second run using a mage build or a faith build or an arcane build, uh, really, uh, deciding it really depends on how I feel right now. Uh, I'm currently going through a mage uh, or the uh, the an intelligence run because I already had an intelligence character. I ran th uh, I, I ran through the um, base game already, so I just said, "Hey, let's just pick up on that character, see how it goes through the DLC." I'm having I'm actually having a ki a harder time with the uh, in intelligence character, and that's only because um. I did not optimize that character at all. I just felt like maxing out intelligence and then doing whatever whatever I felt like. <laughs> and um, I'm having a hard time using my intelligence build. But it's still fun. It's, it's fun enough for me to want to try and go through it again. So yes, a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. I know a lot of people probably won't agree with my rating there. And if I had to... Put my foot down and actually decide whether it's a 9 or, or a 10. I'm going to say it's a 10. This game for me was perfect for me. It, it gave me the boss fight. The tough boss fights I was expecting. More lore uh, to the world. Uh, interesting uh, story. Interesting world areas. 
interesting weapons. Um, I was completely focused in the game. Now, did I curse a lot and did I cry a lot? Absolutely. <laughs> this game made me so mad, but I loved it so much. And I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I love the base game. I love the DLC. Of course, it has its issues. Um, any suggestions that I have to give to improve on the game? Um, I would have to say one of the things I found extremely frustrating is the fact that I have, I have to use those lar the larva tears to respect my character. This made me feel like I couldn't respect my character because what if I run out of larva tears? What, what, I, what do I do then, right? So I never respect, even though that is such a cool mechanic about the game. Remove the larva tears. I do think those should be removed because I think respecting respect, respecting is fun. Now, do you want to charge the character? Yes, go ahead and make it cost runes. Make it cost a lot of runes. But um, I want to not feel punished for wanting to try a different build. Because now... For me to want to try a, a different build, I have to essentially do a completely new run because I don't want to use the larva tier. Because what if I run out and then I can't stick back to the build that I want, which is my strength build? So I I don't I don't think that's a good part of the game. I think that should be removed and just allow me to respect when I want to respect. Make me farm runes. I'll do that. Make me farm uh, a million runes if that's what's what it's gonna cost. I'll do it. Um, if you really want to use a larva tier, then make it so I can purchase it. Make it so I can purchase lar larva tier so I can go ahead and respect when I want to respect. Um, another thing would be the mything of the weapons, the somber ancient dragon stone, uh, uh, ancient dragon smithing stone, and then the ancient dragon smithing stones. You guys included more smithing stones one through nine in this DLC scattered everywhere. We don't need that. We got the ball bearings. There is no point in adding those. We I would have loved more ancient smithing, uh, ancient dragon smithing stones or somber ancient dragon smith. I would like more of those scattered throughout the world instead of these random smithing stones I keep picking up. Now the monsters randomly dropping those stones, that's fine. But for me to find a smithing stone level two or level one, that was so tilting. That that was that made me. That made me feel like you guys thought I was I was stupid. <laughs> like, why did I waste my time getting onto a ledge to get one of those? Um, even better, instead of just replacing the ones that exist with ancient dragon smithing stones or somber, um, why not just include ball bearings so we can purchase those? That way we can max out every weapon. That way we can have fun cycling through the weapons. Because right now, what I'm seeing streamers have to do just so they can try the weapons is either create some kind of script to farm those poor Abel Norics, um, or just use mods that level up the character to max. Those aren't fun. <laughs> Farming the, the poor little egg boys over in Mog's Palace? No, that's not, that's, not, that's not something you want your player to have to do just so they can enjoy the awesome content you have. Um, even but even despite all that I still give it a 10 out of 10 I love this game I love the DLC the price tag is worth it and I'm gonna go ahead and do another run if you guys want to see me do an intelligence faith arcane dexterity run go ahead and catch me on my stream I'll be on twitch and uh, please leave a like and subscribe um, at the end of this video because it'll let me know you guys are interested in actually watching more of this uh, this content. And it'll kind of support me in in a small way. I obviously have a large following, but so any any like, any subscribe, any follow on Twitch would be amazing. Either way, I'll see you guys later. Uh, that's what I got to say about this game. Loved it. Want more of it. And uh, hopefully the uh, release another DLC or maybe another game. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.